Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway of Living Streams International bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. I'd like to capture my thoughts still on, in 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm just beginning to look at ways and means uh, of bringing um, God's glory down here on this earth. Let, let God visit earth. Let God visit my church. Let God visit people with his glory. And so I'm still in 1 Kings chapter 18. But today's title is Repair the Stones. Repair the Stones. Um, and, 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 and I'm fascinated by 1 Kings chapter 18. And I say the title for this morning is Repair the Stones. Now I'm looking at how, you know, the fact that Elijah prayed down fire and fire fell from heaven, devoured the, 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 the cow and then, and then licked the water. It's fascinating. And I'm not just interested in the story, but I'm interested in the applicative principles that I can also use in my life to bring down fire into my ministry, my church, and to bring down fire, the fire of God. I mean, not destructive fire, but the fire of God. Don't ask me about fire. I, I know what I'm talking about. Don't ask me about destructive fire because my ch my ch uh, our chapel was gutted by fire uh, uh, last year, and it was not an easy thing. But thank God, the God of restoration, the glory of the latter house, is always greater than the glory of the former. Now, uh, now here is the thing that that uh, for me, I'm interested in the principles that Elijah used to to bring down fire, so I can also use those principles and generate fire in my life and in my church and in my business and everything that I do. You, know, you can also do the same. Now, there's something that Elijah did. Like I told you on, um, um, Elijah did something that was very fascinating. The Bible says he 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 repaired the altar. He took 12 pieces of stone. He took 12 pieces of stone and built an altar. He repaired the altar. He, he built the altar. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by it. Anytime the Bible talks about altar, it talks about sacrifice. And anytime the Bible talks about sacrifice, it, it, we talk about not just an easy, uh, uh, but sacrifice that God will respect. And because, like I said, God is no respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of sacrifice. He had respect unto the sacrifice of Abel, and he didn't respect the sacrifice of Cain. So you'd be very surprised. But I found that out at a very costly price. Now here's the interesting thing. I mean, the Bible says he took 12 pieces of stone and repaired the altar, the broken altar. That means the altar, that is the place of sacrifice, that is the concept of sacrifice, the principle of sacrifice had been damaged. The principle of sacrifice had been invaded. The principle of sacrifice had been disconnected. The principle of sacrifice had been abandoned. The principle of sacrifice had been destroyed. And Elijah said, if we need fire, let's repair the altar. Let's put the stones together. Let's put the 12 stones together. And the Bible says 12 is the number for divine government and divine order. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 apostles. And, you know, when Elijah said, I'm putting the stones, I'm not just building an altar, I'm not just repairing the, this thing, I'm going to do it according to order, how God ordered it, how God wants it. You see, the principle of giving has been, inva has been invaded by all sorts of theologies and all sorts of doctrines. People have uh, run down and broken the altar of tithe, they've broken down the altar of offering, they've broken down the different things. They've confused alms given with, uh, with tithe. They've confused uh, offering with tithe. They've confused um, uh, uh, sowing with tithe. There are different things. Alms given is a test of your compassion. That is given to a brother or a sister who is in need. That is alms given. Now, offering, it's, 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 uh, it's a test of your love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So given, it's, it's, uh, in terms of offering or, or, or given, is a test of your love. What you love, you give to. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You love somebody, you, give, you buy presents for that person. And it's a desire for you to give to that person. So sometimes giving is also a measurement of your love. Well, 
That's what I read in the Bible. Anyway, whatever you love, you give to. And that, but it goes beyond that. Now, sowing is a test of your faith because you are believing God for something. So you put down a seed and expecting a harvest. But then there's something more than that. But there's something called tithe, which is a test of your obedience because God has ordered, bring the tithe into the storehouse. And people have given all sorts of teaching. They have damaged the altar of tithing. They have damaged the altar of giving. They have damaged the altar of, uh, of, of alms giving and, 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 and offering. One way or the other, we are holding people who will teach on giving and, uh, and, and kind of uh, ascribe all sort of parochial interest to their teachings and to their giving. And we say, oh, they are teaching it because of selfish interest. No, no, and no. Giving is in the Bible. And there are four different types of offerings that we bring. So in a test of your faith, tithe, a test of your obedience, uh, arms giving, a test of your compassion, and love offering. That's the test of your, uh, of your, of your love. That's, that's, what, uh, that's what the Bible says. And we, do, we have assaulted and we have we've broken down the altar. If we want God to do something in our life, we, let us repair the altar. Let us repair the stones. Let us bring the stones together and do it in God's order. And, and listen, I'm not afraid to say this. We need to revisit. You see, we can't remove the ancient landmarks. We can't remove the ancient landmarks. There are things that God, right from Genesis all the way to, to, to uh, uh, the book of Revelation, God is not against given. God is not against it. And I've seen all sorts of teachings that, that are attacking, uh, that are attacking given. And some, some pastors are afraid to talk about given. Listen, and that is why our people are handicapped. Because where there is no seed, there will be no harvest. The seed is, is an indication of a harvest coming. But if you hold the seed in your hand, no harvest. Until you drop the seed in, into the soil. And that is when, unless a corn of wheat falls into the ground, it abides alone. But when it is falling into the ground, when it is sown. And my whole says, given is pleasant. The Bible says, he will go sowing in tears. Shall likewise come back rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. So sowing is characterized by pain, by discomfort. By discouragement, by fears, by tears. But the Bible says the harvest comes with joy and rejoicing, happiness, celebration, party or party, like people will say. So you know what? We need to repair the stones. We need to repair the altar of giving. It's a choice that we have to make. But I'm not afraid to teach it. We need to repair the altar, the sacrifice. We need to talk about it. It is part of our worship with God. You know, when Abraham was going to kill, when Abraham was going to um, uh, sacrifice Isaac, did you know what he said? He said to his wife and to Isaac, we are going to worship. So worship and sacrifice are kin. You can't take that away from each other. It's an essential ingredient of it. It's a choice you have to make. For me, the stones will be repaired. See you later.